All right, so let's have a quick recap of what we did last week in week number two. I loved our discussion last week, everybody, um, and we unpacked quite a bit. First, the biggest thing, we were really looking at the concept of freedom and how freedom is rather anachronistic, right? So that's a great word to understand, something outside of its time and place. Um, and it could be used on purpose. Um, we see that in movies all the time. It could be kind of humorous. It can kind of be glaring. Um, and it can kind of be there for a specific reason. However, in history, in good history, it can be problematic because if something is anachronistic outside of its time and place, that might not be good history. Uh, so it's an important thing and largely tied to, in this regard, to concepts. So the idea of freedom, as we know it in the 21st century, is a completely different definition if you were asked what freedom was in 12th, 13th century medieval England. And uh, so we looked at that last week, didn't we? We were looking at that based on uh, what it was like to be a peasant and what the different terminology and the manorial system. So we created a, a manor called uh, La Frauda Manor. Um, and we, based on real 13th century, very early 13th century, I think it was 1199 to 1201. So it was right on the cusp there of the 12th century. Um, and into the 13th century uh, to look at uh, a survey done of a manor in the Cotswolds now um, that uh, helped us understand uh, what was there in that manor. But we called it La Frauda Manor. And we had, of course, the manor house. This is the center of the whole thing, the heartbeat of uh, the Lord um, that lived there. And in some cases, this might be an abbey. And uh, out, inside the manor had its own system in itself of people that uh, were part of that system and in that manner. We, we talked about the amount of people that were in this manner that were, uh, that were serfs or villains, those that were tied to the land. These were the, uh, they weren't quite slaves, but they were definitely tied there. Then we talked about the obligations that they had tied, being tied to the manor. We also talked about those that were considered free on the land. They had to pay a little more rent than the ones bound, but they might have had less obligations to work uh, the land a little bit more or the, the Lord's land, um, less obligations in their time, but they had more obligations with the money that they had to, uh, to be able to rent the place. And we also talked about some cottagers, how they had about three acres for the land that they had on the manor. And, um, and then outside of that, there was laborers that were small holders outside the manor that had a few acres, but they couldn't sustain themselves, much like the cottagers, so they had to rent their time out to the manor to be able to um, make up for the money they needed to, for, for rent and for livelihood and everything. So it was a very intricate system, wasn't it, uh, on each manor? Um, but then you can kind of see, as you deep dive into it, as we did last week, that perhaps it wasn't so bad to be bound to the land, be bound as a serf. You had a little more land in this case, in our La Frauda Manor, um, and therefore a little more sustenance, a little more way to take care of your family, um, as they were able to maybe expand that, be able to have some more money to expand their own holdings. And we saw that manumissions, those that peasants that were able to get money to free themselves, was a lot less common than peasants who had extra money to buy more land. And we're gonna look at that throughout this class. That So if you had the choice between the money you have to give you freedom or to stay in bondage, but to expand your land, uh, more times than not, they would take the latter and they would expand their land, but still be bound to the land. Now, part of that whole system is not just your time and energy, but to be able to pay, having to pay licenses for pretty much everything. And we talked about that in our class last week. We talked about how if you're wanting to get married, or if your daughter wants, to, if your daughter wants to get married, you're going to have to pay a license for that to the Lord. If you want to get some firewood, you might have to pay a license. If you're getting water from the stream, you're going to have to pay a license. If you want to clear out some land to be able to use it for farming, because there's, you know, brush there or whatever, you're going to have to get a license for that. You're going to have to use time to work on the land, but you're also going to have a lot of expenses. Uh, with licenses. And not only that, but obligations to work the manorial court, to police the manor. So there's a, not a lot of free time and there's a lot of obligations to be part of this system and this community. Um, those that perhaps had weren't bound to the land or the cottagers, or remember we talked about the Monday land, uh, where those that had 
land, maybe three acres, um, had some work every Monday to be able to, as part of their rent system as well. So there's a, there's a lot tied up to just, not just being a peasant, just a peasant is a very loaded term. There's a lot underneath that and their culture and how they worked on the manor um, is largely uh, seen in these surveys. So uh, from that, remember we were looking at then what does freedom look like? If people are choosing to stay in bondage to work the land because the conditions perhaps were better, better freedoms in some regard uh, and other ways, um, then it makes us have to reevaluate what the word freedom was in the Middle Ages, right? So um, that's something to really think about. Now all this recap is I think important for us to remember to recap, look at, maybe skim the reading from last week again, as we start to develop the imagery of the medieval peasant. Because when we have images, look at some of the pictures that um, I was. I asked you to uh, bring a picture in for the class and maybe post it in our, our chat this week on the forum. But if you look at the image of the medieval peasant, what largely are they just doing? It's them working the land. But if you think about the obligations they had, not only working the land, the land of the manor, um, land of the Lord, their own land and so forth. They were also policing. They were part of the manorial court. They had uh, perhaps some other, th they probably had to work if their bridge was broken to work on the bridge, mend the fence, you know, mend the walls. There's a lot of other things going on in their culture and their lives. Um, maybe taking some extra products to a local market, maybe even on the manor they had their own market. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on besides uh, the general idea, the image that we have now in the 21st century that we need to make sure and uncover and grasp when we're looking at the medieval peasant. So use last week to build off for the rest of this class. Cut, remember the different terms of villain, of serf, cottagers, um, and, and, law, and also the land usage the, of um, uh, yardland or virage, or there's all kinds of terms there. If maybe make a little glossary for yourself to remember those to help understand the image of the peasant. And, uh, and we'll be using that here on out. That's a blast.